Hello, my name is Alfredo Arno and I'm a product marketing manager for Power Discrete Products and Module Automotive in North America. I will provide an e-presentation of our silicon carbide traction inverter system design made by ST for e-mobility. Brief overview of this presentation. We will describe the main power blocks involved in e-mobility. We will explain the key benefits of using silicon carbide in traction inverter. We will go over the main features and explanation of the full system power board for traction inverter made by ST. Okay, so let's look at the basic block diagram of an electric vehicle. The core of the electric vehicle is the large high voltage battery needed to store power and to provide power. The battery is a DC-DC power block. It takes DC in to be charged and, and takes DC out to deliver the power. The first power conversion happens in the traction inverter. We need an inverter to convert the DC power from the battery into AC to spin the motor. The second power conversion happens during charging. If we plug in the car to the AC outlet, we have an onboard charger that converts the AC into DC. The power of the onboard charger will set the charging time of the battery. The higher the power, the shorter the time. The fastest charging occurs by using large converter outside of the car, which are becoming part of the electric vehicle ecosystem. Other conversion happen in the car with other DC-DC converter. Silicon carbide MOSFETs and diodes have been investigated in these blocks to exploit the extreme power density and lower losses in the challenging power conversion that is happening in the electric vehicle due to the high power, high voltage and small space involved. Speaking of the inverter block, here you can see a very simple schematic that shows how a three-phase inverter is done with six switches. We have three legs and then two switches per leg, the high side switch and the low side switch. The amount of power transistor we have in a three-phase inverter is a multiplier of six. Since we can use transistor in parallel for each position to achieve the target power which translates into current that the switch need to sustain at the different loads. The silicon carbide MOSFET's voltage ratings depends on the bus voltage, which is typically the voltage of the battery. For 400 volts bus DC, we will use 650 volts or 750 volts rated transistors. For 700 to 800 volts bus, we will use 1200 volts rated transistor. The higher the voltage, the more favorable silicon carbide benefits are compared to silicon. This is an important chart. Let's look at this case of a traction inverter, 10 kHz switching, running from 800 volts DC bus. We have sites one module with several IGBTs plus diode in parallel per switch to meet the power required by the high working load the 100%. And we have sites the other module with silicon carbide to meet the same high load power requirement. In other words, both silicon carbide and IGBT, in this case, they will give approximately the same peak power. So in this case, we can see that overall the losses are much lower for silicon carbide, about 50% lower at 100% load. And indeed, you can see that the conduction losses are almost the same. That's because we cite both solutions for the same peak power. The most significant benefits are coming from the switching losses, and especially at a lower load, which represents a typical driving cycle of the electric vehicle. At lower load, the power losses are reduced by 80%, meaning that I'm taking the least power possible from the battery and improving the mileage range per battery charge of the vehicle. That is the first benefit that everybody involved in electric vehicles are looking for, from consumer to car makers. The second, in this case, is that we can also reduce the size of the cooling system, which is sized to dissipate the maximum power 
at 100% load. The power losses considerations we just did can be visualized in this slide. If we target the same peak power of the traction inverter and we make now the two cases for electric vehicle 400 volts, 800 volts DC bus, we can calculate that it will require much smaller die area to provide the same peak power. About three times smaller die area for silicon carbide solution of inverter 400 volts DC bus and five times smaller die area for silicon carbide solution of inverter 750 volts DC bus. Because of the lower power losses, silicon carbide inverter will have 2 to 4% uh, improved efficiency in the 400 volts vehicle and drastically 4 to 8% for 700 volts uh, vehicle. This will turn into longer range, as we said before, of the vehicle per battery charge. That really depends on the motor and the car itself, but it would be significant. Another way to look at the uh, lower losses and higher power density of silicon carbide is to look at the power achievable in the same footprint. As we said, the die area is significantly smaller for silicon carbide, which means we can put more die area in the package and achieve higher power peak power. In this roadmap like picture, you can see we can achieve more power with silicon carbide Gen 2 ST and even higher power with the new coming Gen 3 silicon carbide with lower RDS on the area versus IGBT module. The great power density and efficiency of a silicon carbide we have, that we have mentioned in the previous slides can be tested and verified with the traction inverter full system evaluation board developed by ST. In a nutshell, this system of boards represents a very compact high power motor drive. It can run a motor of an electric vehicle from 400 volts DC and 700 to 800 volts DC bus. The system is comprehensive and includes a driving board and motor control. The block diagram of uh, the power evaluation board is uh, shown in the middle of the slide, which is also the block diagram of the traction inverter. The power module uh, is shown on the left side and in the central part of the diagram. It is a six pack, meaning that we have three legs, as we mentioned before, with all the power switches for the high side and low side in silicon carbide. Inside the module, there are uh, silicon carbide dies in parallel per switch to achieve the current rating uh, that we need for each switch. Uh, we have two versions, 1200 volts and 750 volts uh, silicon carbide for 700 volts and 400 volts DC bus uh, testing. As you can see on the module, we have two sides. The top sides uh, of the module include the press fit pin uh, for driving the gate of the MOSFET. And the bottom is the cooling plate, and you can see the um, fins okay, that can contact with the liquid cooling in the chamber uh, for a uh, direct cooling system. Finally, uh, also on the same uh, chart on the left, you can see the testing data of the efficiency at very low level, showing the much better efficiency of the silicon carbide uh, at all loads, as we mentioned before. The system to be tested, and is, uh, as we said, is a comprehensive of everything, also include uh, the gate driving board, you can see on the right, with six isolated uh, gate drivers, which is press fitted on top of the power module, and handles the driving on the power switch, including uh, safety features, which are embedded in uh, SD gap and the LN95 drivers. On top, uh, there is the microcontroller board uh, and the DC DC power supply. Uh, the microcontroller board uh, with a microprocessor uh, that handles the firmware uh, for the motor control. Here, in this final slide, you can see 
better the stack-up of the ASPAC drive module from the bottom, uh, the driving board on top, and the DC-DC board, including the motor control board with the microcontroller. The kit comes also with the water cooling case. Uh, you can see a side view of it. Uh, and the connection, you can see the connection for the cooling pump uh, that will uh, circulate the cooling liquid in and out of the cooling chamber. With this evaluation kit, uh, our customer can finally test silicon carbide uh, MOSFETs okay, and benefits uh, in the traction inverter motor. Uh, the only thing needed is the external DC capacitor and the uh, and the pump for circulating the uh, the cooling system, as we said. Also, this is very important uh, for ST because we testing uh, as a full system, we can develop better components. Uh, the key products included in the system, uh, starting from the power module, are the ADP 86012W2, uh, which has a uh, switch, silicon carbide switch, 1200 volts, 3.5 million in six pack uh, for a 700 volt system, as we said before. The ADP 575W2 as alternative module, which is a 750 volts lower JSON, of course, 2 million uh, switch for 400 volts uh, system testing. The gate drawing board, again, includes the SD gap or the L95. Uh, both are automotive grade uh, isolated gate drivers, uh, also ASOLD capable. And the DCDC is including uh, uh, the A7986, the A6902 uh, regulators, switching regulators uh, for the DCDC, as we said. Uh, while the control board uh, has the SPC58, 32 bit uh, automotive grade. Uh, MCU, uh, including the motor control system, ASOLD capable. All uh, other uh, functions, of course, are populated like TVS and diodes are also included in the board. Thank you for listening to this presentation and welcome to visit ST.com for further information.